Okay, so <clears throat> today we're going to be replacing the keyboard on a MacBook Pro model A2442. Uh, this is a very unique keyboard replacement because it is a uh, American and Swiss, sorry, Sweden keyboard. Okay, so we're going to start by uh, taking off that back panel using the penelope screwdriver there. And I'm immediately going to remove uh, that trackpad plate with those T5 screws and unplug the dad <laughs> unplug the daughter battery cable right there and then we're going to use a T5 screwdriver to unscrew the actual battery connector and bend that guy up <clears throat> and then we're going to use another T5 screwdriver to remove the screws holding in the logic board Uh, note that the two left-hand side ones and the top far right one are a T6 head instead of a T5. Uh, we're going to unpeel these glued on little stickers that cover more T5 screws holding in the logic board there. And then we're going to unscrew the T5 and then the T3 uh, screws that are holding the Wi-Fi bracket in and then starting on the right hand side of the board moving to the left we're going to use a T3 screwdriver and unscrew and unclip all of the uh, retention bars that hold in the connections to the logic board and if you're watching this video and you need a keyboard replacement just like the one we're doing here today uh, we will have both the parts and tools linked in the description below and if it's, you know, a little bit above your pay grade, we do offer international and domestic mail-in repair. Uh, that'll also be in the description below. Uh, don't forget this top left one here. Uh, that's for the Touch ID. If you do forget that, you will rip your Touch ID, and that will not be a fun time. All right, so now we're just going to use our spudging tool and unclip all of the connections to the board, starting with the keyboard and the keyboard backlighting. Moving on to the right-hand speaker then the headphone jack and the type c ports uh, the top right one's going to be the lcd proximity sensor the middle two are going to be the lcd connections along with the wi-fi antennas below them top left one is going to be touch id uh, the far left is going to be type c and then a speaker one on the left and then the two center ones are for the CPU fans. And we're going to unscrew these two T3 screws at the bottom. And bend these little rubber grommets out of the way to free the logic board here. It is quite stuck in there, so the best way to do it is from the middle. Get the edge closest towards you out and start working on that left hand side. That's what likes to get stuck in there. And once you got that, the logic board will come out freely just like that. We can set that aside for now. And now we're going to work on removing the CPU fans, or the cooling fans. So on both of the top sides there, that's going to be a T5 screwdriver on the right and left, followed by a T3 for the rest of the screws. And now we can just lift those CPU fans out. Cooling fans, my bad. And now we're gonna use a Penta, sorry, a P, I'll get back to you on the screwdriver actually. I think it is a Pentalobe, I'm not sure though. PL, PL1, that's the screwdriver. We're gonna use a PL1 screwdriver and start removing the exposed screws right now these hold in the keyboard uh, and these are the ones that we'll need to get rid of all along it in just a second here uh, these screws are pretty small as you can see in the video multiple times here I lose or have to hunt some of them out they get kind of stuck in there uh, but now we're gonna peel back this glued on backlighting so this is actually the a black cover that's glued, glued onto the back of the keyboard uh, and this is what provides the backlighting be very careful, go very slow just so you don't rip it. Um, it is very delicate.
Uh, when you're peeling this cover off, as long as you get the edges, the middle should come just fine. Uh, the edges are kind of where all that tension is and the ones that are liable to rip. As you can see there, we've now removed the backlighting and we've exposed the keyboard. So now we're going to continue to use that PL1 screwdriver and go all along the edges of the keyboard and remove all of these screws. Again, you're going to see me fighting with them here. Uh, they're really small, not really magnetic, and easy to lose. So go slow, maybe use a magnet, uh, take your time on this step. Uh, to make the repair easier, we do actually recommend removing the Wi-Fi bracket at the top. Uh, it just makes it easier for you. Uh, so to now remove the keyboard, after we've gotten all the PL1 screws out, it's just going to be a peel away. So once you push it out, uh, there's metal rivets that are now holding it in. You just have to peel. It'll break all of them off. Uh, there really isn't another way to do this without either drilling them all, uh, but this is the easiest way to do it is just break all those rivets off. So now that we've got the keyboard out, I'm just going to turn the unit over and get some of those lost screws that got stuck in the Wi-Fi vent out because uh, I'm going to need those for replacing it soon here. This unit was quite dirty, so we're just going to clean it off a little bit before we reassemble it. All right, so we're going to lay that keyboard in. Uh, it's easiest to, to do the top right hand side first just to make sure you're not covering any wires, you're incorrectly. Uh, and just seat it down once you get it in there. And then using those really small PL1 screws, we're going to go around the uh, unit again. I like to do a bit of a cross pattern just to make it sh make sure it sits correctly. Uh, you can tighten it any way you like as long as it is lined up correctly. Uh, it should be just fine. On that right hand side uh, where the microphone array is, don't forget that screw under there. It's quite easy to forget. Uh, same thing with the top where the LCD connections are. Uh, you know, out of sight, out of mind, make sure you get those guys in there. And now we're going to stick that backlighting back on. Make sure you don't cover that mic array cable uh, or else you won't be able to get it into the logic board there. And make sure you stick the keyboard backlighting uh, connector right back where it was just to make sure it lines up correctly. So we're going to start by putting the cooling fans back in and you can line them up with these brackets here. And again, we're going to use a T5 screw uh, that came out right on the corners of these guys, the top corners, followed by T3s everywhere else. All right, so we're going to clean off this logic board just a little bit before we put it back in. Uh, again, it looks like a dog kind of got around in here. Uh, that'll slow it down, heat things up, make your MacBook run a little bit worse. So we're going to go ahead and clean that off for the customer, make sure everything's running good and well. Alrighty, so we're going to start by getting that left side secured in there. Like I said, that's the harder side to get in and out as well. So we're just going to make sure we don't cover any of these connections, as well as the little rubber grommets that cover the fans, just to make sure they seal well. 
and go ahead and make sure all of your cables are 100% on this side of the board before you get it down, get any screws in, uh, or else you're going to be tearing it right back apart. And if you're interested of doing this repair yourself, uh, we do have both the parts and tools linked in the description below. And I don't blame you if you don't want to do this yourself. So if you are interested, we do offer mail-in repair, uh, both domestic and international. That will also be in the description below. There we go. So we've got the board all the way in now. And every connection we need is where it should be. So we're just going to go ahead and start plugging those guys back in. Uh, you'll notice a couple times here that I'm actually peeling the tape backing away from the connector. Uh, when you do disconnect them, sometimes the tape comes back down on the connector, the gold parts, and it makes it really hard to actually get it to seat correctly. Uh, just to make sure that the unit, you know, is working fully and nothing's disconnected, anything like that. I do peel back that tape just to make sure it's fully seated. All right, so we're gonna get the keyboard cable in at the bottom, along with the keyboard backlighting, then the CPU fans in the middle, the speaker on the right, the micro microphone array on the right as well, followed by the aux port, the Type-C ports, the MagSafe port, the LCD uh, proximity sensor, the LCD connections. Uh, these ones can be a bit tough to get in. Make sure you line them up correct. Uh, you'll get a good solid click as soon as they're actually in. And the LCD connection on the left as well there. And it's a bit out of frame here, uh, but we're going to get the touch ID, the other Type-C port, and the left speaker in as well. And lastly, we're going to go ahead and plug in those Wi-Fi antennas. Uh, the Wi-Fi antennas can be hard to plug in. I really recommend going from the bottom upwards uh, just to make sure everything lines up correctly. Uh, so here, again, sorry about that, guys. It's a little out of frame. We're going to start by putting all of the covers uh, back on their respective connectors. And then using those T3 screws, uh, we're just going to go ahead and secure those guys back down. Uh, you can go in whatever order you like. I like to go... Uh, left to right when I'm putting them back on and right to left when I'm taking them off. And again, when screwing in these connections, or sorry, the retention bars, I recommend getting one side started and then moving to the other screw and then tightening them both down. Now, if you go too hard on one side to start, it can make it really hard to actually get the cable, or sorry, the retention bar fully seated correctly. And don't forget the black uh, retention bar for the Wi-Fi antennas there. You really don't want those coming unplugged. That'd be a bad time. 
And then we're going to start screwing in the logic board, starting with the two T3s in the center of the board and moving to the T5s in the center as well. I like to start in the center and work my way out. Uh, you could go any fashion here, uh, but I feel like this just keeps the board exactly where it needs to be. And again, don't forget that the left hand side top two screws are going to be a T6 as well as the very top right hand side one. Uh, the rest of these are going to be T5s. And there we are with our T6 bit. Uh, when you screw in that top right cable, make sure you don't crush that LCD proximity sensor. Uh, it could rip or work incorrectly if you do so. Uh, here we're going to be securing the battery daughter cable first, uh, just on the daughter board side there. And then we're going to be screwing in the actual battery. And again, plugging in that battery daughter board uh, to the main board there. And now we're going to be uh, plugging in that trackpad cable and securing its retention bar in as well just to cover everything up there. And we're going to be sliding on that bottom case. Uh, so the easiest way to do it is start on one side, get those little retention clips uh, secured, and then go ahead and push the other side in. Uh, you'll notice when you put the bottom case on, there are a longer set of screws. Uh, they all go on the top side here. The shorter set all go on the bottom four. Uh, but again, just use the longer ones up top and the shorter ones on the bottom. And we are all done. As you can see, it's a brand new keyboard. Everything works great.